This is where the traffickers force the Guatemalan teens to work off their debts. No, no es fácil ganar 600 dólares por semana y esos 600 dólares te quiten 550. No es fácil para una persona entonces. This man says he worked with the teens at Trillium. Cuando alguien ya no quería pagar o se quedaba sin querer pagar o o, o decía querer protestar, entonces le llamaba a su familia. Vamos a quitar de tu tierra y todo su dinero que ha ganado o que él ya ha pagado se va a perder. Y o oh, amenazaban de muerte. Muchas familias me dijeron a mí, muchos amigos me dijeron a mí este, que estaban amenazados de muerte, que iban a matar a su papá, a su mamá, a uno de sus familiares si no quería pagar o no quería trabajar. In October 2014, after four months at Trillium, one of the teens managed to call his uncle in Florida. The uncle agreed to talk to us, but was afraid to show his face on camera. Y cuando mi sobrino me llamó, me dijo que al señor juez le había dicho a mi sobrino que si no cumples con tu deuda, a tu papá le voy a ir a dar unos dos o tres plomazos. Él estaba asustado y él estaba preocupado, llorándome a mí, llamándome que yo luchara yo por él. Entonces yo le dije que sí, yo voy a tratar la manera. Entonces yo tuve que hablar con el, el sheriff. One day I received a phone call. There was a gentleman that had a nephew that had been smuggled into the country from Guatemala and was being kept to work against his will in Ohio. And within 24 hours, I had a conference call from the head of the FBI, HSI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office in that region. Two months later, federal and local law enforcement moved in. A human trafficking bust at an egg farm in Maryland. In the early morning hours, they raided the trailer park where the teens had been living. Federal prosecutors call it modern-day slavery. Their paychecks kept by their traffickers. They detained approximately 45 people. The human trafficking operation was run by a third-party contractor hired by Trillium Farms. At least 10, they determined, were victims of trafficking, including eight minors. And the U.S. Attorney's Office says its investigation is ongoing. I mean, how could that possibly happen? The more we learned about it, the more it became apparent that there was a connection back to our immigration policies and how the Department of Health and Human Services deals with kids who come here unaccompanied. What makes this Marion case even more alarming is that a U.S. government agency was actually responsible for delivering some of the victims into the hands of the abusers. How could the federal government take these kids in, try to protect them, and then as they send them out to families, you know, pending a court date, give them right back to the people who had brought them up here. Here's one of those homes. This is the trailer. Senator Rob Portman was chairman of the committee that investigated the failures at the Department of Health and Human Services, the agency that released the boys to the traffickers in Ohio. The more we learned, the more troubling it was from a federal perspective, because no one seemed to want to take responsibility for it. What is everybody's doing is doing this. Out the door, we're done. We've got these kids. They're here. Um, they're living on our soil. And for us to just, you know, assume someone else is going to take care of them and uh, throw them to the wolves, which is what HHS was doing, is, is flat out wrong. I don't care what you think about immigration policy. It's wrong. The HHS division responsible for placing the teens declined to be interviewed. They told the committee they had strengthened their procedures to protect children. But the committee had found over a dozen other cases of trafficking related to the surge and said it's impossible to know just how many more victims there are. It was not just the Ohio egg farm case. There were other cases in which multiple children were placed with sponsors in homes where they were subject to human trafficking, sexual abuse, and other severe forms of abuse and exploitation. More than 180,000 unaccompanied minors have been placed in communities across the country. But because there's so little follow-up with them once they're out of the government's care, we have no idea what's happened to them.